Romans chapter 4. I was thinking about this today. I didn't do a little research on this. I just actually thought about it this morning. I need to find out who invented this and if he's getting any kind of royalties off of it. If you've seen those books, uh, I guess for dummies, you know, computer for dummies, or and it seems like they've got a book for everything, for dummies. And, um, and, and I'm certainly not implying that y'all are dummies. But if I had to basically title the series or put a title on the series of Romans, I might call it that Romans for Dummies. And it's and again, it's not implying that you're you're dummies. It's just the idea there is is uh, if you ever picked up one of those books for anything, is that they take something that might be at least on the surface, quite complex and try to break it down into simpler terms and language that somebody who has never understood it or doesn't understand it might be able to understand at least the basis of it. Does that make sense? So I understand the context of that. So again, I'm not implying that that anything towards you as people but uh, I want to, if I could just kind of title it that way, uh, that as we go through the book of Romans, I, I'm just trying to simplify what Paul is saying uh, and bring it down to terms that we as Christians can understand it. Because if you don't understand it, how are you going to apply it? Does that make sense? Be, and I don't know if you've ever sat under preaching before, but I've sat under preaching sometimes and walked out and just went, I don't know what he said. And I think we've all been there. And, and, and I'm not saying that that individual was saying anything necessarily wrong, but sometimes grammatically they're using terms I've never heard before, and I don't even understand what that means. And, uh, um, you know, uh, sometimes working with Jeff is that way. But Jeff is a is a is a master carpenter, a craftsman. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. See, that's just it. He's not a carpenter. He's a craftsman. Okay, and so he starts talking about all these these wood terminologies, and I I don't understand it. You know, same thing with talking to Jimmy Don or or Randy with mechanics. They start talking sometimes. My mechanics, I know a little bit, but you get too far past the ignition, and I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, and so um, th- this is kind of the idea here that I want to try to break it down and not make it so complex because I, I really, as a pastor, I don't think the Bible is as complex as some people make it out to be because it's really not. And so when we talk about the book of Romans, for just a quick review, I can review it this way. Romans chapter 1, Paul says, I'm not ashamed. So he says, it's very simple. Romans chapter 1, not ashamed. We, Paul was not ashamed to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the environment that he was preaching in, in Rome, uh, uh, he's not ashamed. And in today's day and environment, by the way, no matter what the environment or where we're at, whether we are in a restaurant or whether we're in Walmart or, or the political environment or whatever's going on, we ought not be ashamed. And then we get into chapter 2 where he talks about judgment, that we're all judged and we're going to be judged and be careful about how we judge. And so you have this theme of chapter 2, which is judgment. And then you get into chapter 3, And Paul refers to how God judges, which is through righteousness, based upon righteousness, our righteousness, and how our righteousness uh, has filthy rags. And and we we talked a little bit about that a couple weeks ago. And so moving forward now, we start out with not being ashamed and then into judgment and God's judgment and then righteousness. Uh, uh, in chapter 4, there's a key word here, and we're going to talk about justification. 
So again, I just want to break it down. Sometimes when we look at these, these chapters in a broad context, if we can kind of get it down to, you, you've heard that term, a nutshell. If we can get it down to a nutshell, then we might have a little bit basic understanding of what, what we're talking about here. And we've also heard this, the Romans road. When we lead somebody to Christ, a lot of times we want to share that Romans road. Well, as you're going through Romans, and I think you'll see this by the time we're done, we talk about, I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel message. What is the gospel message? We're all sinners and we're going to be judged. Judged based upon what? Righteousness. How do we get through that? And we're going to start seeing that now move through the book of Romans, okay? And so, how am I doing? Are we doing okay so far? Okay, so again, Romans for dummies, right? Okay, if you can see that book, I remember big yellow cover, right? Uh, okay, so if we could put Romans on the front cover of that book, Romans for dummies, okay? And so this is what I want to accomplish today. So let's start back here in chapter 4 and verse 1 this morning. A couple verses, we'll have a word of prayer, and we'll get into this this morning. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then? that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, again, we love you this morning. Praise you and thank you for all that you've done for us. Now, help me, Lord. Uh, I know jokingly we we give this this thought process, Romans, for dummies, but even I, Lord, I, uh, I want to understand it so that I can present it clearly. So, Lord, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit, cleanse me of sin, free me of self, and help me now uh, that I might present this this, uh, doctrine of justification, that we're justified by faith. So, Lord, I need you. Fill this place. Uh, uh, Give me the words to speak now, and we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as we now venture out into chapter 4, Give me a kind of a background here before we move any further, and I think hopefully prayerfully I can make this clear. So Paul uh, is now, remember, in Rome, and he is standing, if you will, between two different factions here. He has the traditions of the Jews on one side, and he has the vile, sinful actions of the Romans on the other. And yet he stands between both of them, a Roman citizen of Rome and a Jew. So Paul understands both sides of it. In other words, it's not, and by the way, I believe Paul did understand the vile sinful life. Understanding meaning he came out of that, okay? And and being a Jew, he understood the traditions of the Jews. He understood the different cultures. He understood the Roman culture. He understood the Jewish culture. So this was not a novice standing here in the middle of Rome preaching. He, he understood both people. Uh, he understood both ideologies. But one thing that I believe he understood more than that was he understood Scripture. He understood God's Word. And so as he's standing there and preaching and teaching, he, he, is, he is, if you will, a, a student of both. He understands where he's at, and he also understands that as he knocks down the Roman side of things, to defy Rome was a death sentence. I mean, I mean, listen, it, 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 wasn't a, it wasn't a smart thing to denounce Caesar. Not smart. Not smart to stand there in the court of Rome or, or, or out there in the city and go, I hate Caesar. Okay. I mean, that's kind of like, uh, uh, that's kind of like showing up in Philadelphia Eagles Stadium with a Dallas Cowboys jersey on. It's, it may not end well for you, okay? Uh, they're just, and I'm just using analogies you guys can understand. Uh, uh, there are just certain things you, you say uh, in certain areas, and in some areas you don't say things, and, and you don't speak out. And yet we go back to chapter 1 where Paul understands that, and he says, 
I, now watch, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You, Rome, crucified my Christ. So you got to understand that statement. When he stands up in the middle of Rome and says, I choose him over you. Ooh. Them's fighting words. Right? So, and Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to stand here in Rome and defy Caesar. Because Caesar was God. He was a God in and of himself. And they had multiple gods. But what Paul was saying was that as a Roman citizen, I denounce all your gods. I denounce Caesar. I denounce your belief system. And I choose Christ. Now we say, well, praise God for that. Then he looks at the Jew and he says, and I denounce your traditions. Ooh. Back up, Bucky. Let me tell you something. You might say, man, that's pretty harsh. We understand the whole idea of denouncing Caesar. And sometimes we go, ah, that's not such a big deal. Oh, it was. Matter of fact, if you go back and went and, and, and look at what Jesus was saying, every time Jesus was preaching and Jesus would call out the Pharisees and Jesus would, would call out these things, they tried to stone him. And the only reason they're not stoning Paul in Rome is because Paul's not saying those things in Galilee. Because if he was in Jerusalem saying those things, they'd be trying to stone him. But he's in Rome. But it doesn't make the statement any more power or any less powerful, rather. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, uh, I denounce Rome and I denounce these, these traditions that you're basing your salvation on. So having understood that basis going into chapter 4, Paul's going to break it down. As a matter of fact, Paul's going after Abraham. How dare you? How dare you go after Abraham? I mean, Paul's going to call it. He's going to, hey, let's get to the root of the matter, Jews. You Jews base everything that you believe, all of your salvation, all of your traditions are all based in Father Abraham. And, Jews gonna take, uh, and Paul's going to take out his little pen and he's going to pop their bubble. Boop! See, because the whole basis was is that Father Abraham, it's that blood covenant, it's a covenant that God made with us through Abraham, and it's the covenant of circumcision, and he is our father, and we're Jews, so we're good to go, and we're on our way to heaven. And Paul said, mm -mm, no, you're not. Blasphemy. Like some of you looked at Caleb because he sang a Christmas song before December 1st. Blasphemy. I uh, see. It will be okay. We'll be okay. I know. <laughs> How dare you go after Abraham? And yet, Paul, now through the entire chapter 4, he's going to confront the children of Israel with Abraham. And so he's telling them now, and in, our, in the first three verses here, and I'm not going to take time again. Remember, Romans for dummies, okay? Break it down instead of getting too complex with it. Let's just break it down to one little, little nutshell here so that we can understand what he's saying. He says, verse 1, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? So what do we find in the story of Abraham? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So he point blank comes out and says, look, if Abraham were justified, and the word justify here, now the word justified has to do with a process. This is the idea of going from, an, from an, a, 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 a legalistic traditionalism, or the law as it is, to grace. The word justification or justified is a pathway. Okay? It's the distance between one to the other. It's the distance between legalism and the law and grace. It's where, it's where, and this is what he's trying to explain to them. He says, look, the idea of justification was that yes, we have the law, we have righteousness, but how do we gain that righteousness? We gain it by faith. 
or belief in God. But the Jews believed that it was one of works. It was one of tradition. It was one of action. And Paul looks at them and says, "Are you so basically what you're saying is, is that the works of Abraham and the things that Abraham did, based upon what you're saying is that because we do the same things Abraham did, then we're justified by those same works. And Paul is saying, but that's not what Abraham did. And everybody stands back and goes, oh, oh. nay, nay, that's not right. And Paul said, oh, but it's true. You're, you're claiming that Abraham uh, got his righteousness or was justified by rights through his works. And we were talking about this this morning. There is a, and I'm gonna, and I'm saying this not for y'all here, because y'all may not understand this. I'm saying this for other preachers that are out there that are gonna throw hate mail at me down the road later, sooner or later, and tell me what kind of a heretic I am. But this passage of scripture throws this idea. There's a, there's a, a belief in a doctrine system out there called dispensationalism, and dispensationalism has to do with dispensations or this word dispensation means periods of time, okay? And so the idea of dispensationalism here is, is that God has a plan and He's laid it out since the very beginning of time and that God's work would be done and fulfilled through certain dispensations of time. But the idea here is, is unfortunately, that those who believe in dispensationalism believe that God's, uh, uh, in that dispensation of time of Abraham, that salvation was gained by works and that salvation did not come by grace through faith until Jesus came on the cross. Hogwash! And some of y'all don't amen that because you don't know what that means. Hogwash! Because what that means is, is that salvation, they would believe that salvation would come by works in the Old Testament, but salvation would come by grace in the New Testament. Now watch, some of them even believe that salvation will come by a completely different way during the tribulation in the millennium. You know what that means? That means that Jesus would, Jesus would have, that God has multiple plans for salvation. God has one plan for salvation. One. Only one. And it has always been, always been, justification by grace through faith as to what he did on the cross. Always. So though I believe in dispensations of time, I am not a dispensationalist. But in our text, Paul is, is declaring that in verse 2 he says, If Abraham were watched, were justified by works, notice, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. In other words, if, if it was something that Abraham did that caused him, that gained his righteousness, then Abraham could glory in what he did, and that it would not be in what God would do or could do or can do. So our justification does not come through anything that we do, but it comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, as we move forward in this text, because i got to hurry here. Oh, gosh, I only have about 15 minutes. And I still have a four-point outline. Isn't that great? Okay, here we go. Verse 3 says, For what saith the Scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So again, here, in a nutshell, Verse 3, so if it was not justified, if he was not justified by works and he was justified by faith, what does that mean? It says in verse 3, what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. That's it. It's not simple. Again, put it in a nutshell. Abraham was counted for righteousness because he believed in God. Y'all still with me? Don't get quiet on me. Okay, turn. I want to show you something. Turn to James chapter 2. And you need to turn there. Now watch this. James chapter 2. Hebrews, James, 
chapter 2 and verse 21. James chapter 2, verse 21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of of God. Now let's understand something here for a minute. Now when you're reading this you're saying but it just says here that Abraham uh, was justified by his works. Stop and think about this for a minute. When Abraham and for the sake of time we're not going to get too deep into this. When Abraham goes to offer his son up Isaac you remember that story? God said take Isaac, take a burnt offering you're going to go up here on the mountaintop and I want you to sacrifice your son to me. I want you to give Isaac up as a burnt offering unto me. And, and, and Abraham goes, Isaac, Isaac, come on, we're going to go sacrifice. And Isaac says, okay, let's go, Pop. And we got the wood, and they get all the way to the mountaintop. And Isaac says, hey, Pop, we got wood. We got the, the, the flint here We're going to light the match. We've got the knife. We got everything to go here. But where's the sacrifice? And Daddy looks at Isaac and says, you're it, Bucky. Ties him up, puts him on the altar. Actually, it's not what he said. Remember what he said? God would provide what? Himself a lamb. You really got to stop and read that. Now, a lot of people say, Abraham didn't know that God was going to send his son. He may not have completely understood the process, but he understood this. God would provide the sacrifice whether it was then or in the future or down the line, that God had a plan and all he did was believe that God would fulfill that plan. Now stop and think about this for a minute. It was, a, it was not the fact that Abraham sacrificed or the work that he did or the circumcision or the tradition. It was that he believed God. He had faith. Do you understand how much faith you have to have to wrap your son up or your daughter, I, I'm sitting here thinking about little uh, 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 Sela. What kind of faith would it take to put her on an altar uh, with the idea of sacrificing her? It's not the action. It's the faith that Abraham had to fulfill the actions. Therefore, his works were justified. But it wasn't the work itself. It was the faith that it took to take the action. Because the action without the faith is for your own self-glory. I, I, I'm really appreciating Jimmy Don about it because now Jimmy Don understands it. It, it. it becomes clear, do you see? Because when we're talking about justified by faith, it's not of our works. It is that we believe that God can do what God says he can do. And so as Paul's standing there, and he's standing there between these two factions, he's standing there between the Jews, and he's standing there between the Romans, and he's telling them that, that, that your father Abraham, you're trying to base your salvation upon the same works that Abraham put into play, but you're not understanding that it wasn't the works that God counted for righteousness for Abraham. It was the faith behind the works that God counted. And so I want to very quickly give you four things in about ten minutes. If you look down in your text, going back to Romans chapter 4, the very end of the chapter, there are four things here that Abraham believed God in. I'm going to move through these very quickly. Notice in verse 18 through 18 through 20 in our text. Romans chapter 4, 18 through 20. Who against hope believed God in hope, there's that word believed again, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall I see be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead 
uh, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Understand this. Abraham believed and had faith that God's promises were true. He believed that what God promised would happen. I believe that that is still today. Folks, I believe God's promises are true. I believe that when God said he's coming back again, he's coming back again. He's going to do it, okay? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, whereby, uh, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 2 Corinthians 1, 20, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Titus 1, 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Listen, we have hope and we have promised that he is coming back again. All of his promises have been yea and yea or nay and nay. Listen, if God said it ain't going to happen, it ain't going to happen. If God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. His promises are true. Abraham believed in God's promises. Let me give you the second one. Abraham believed and had faith in God's power. Notice verse 21. And being fully persuaded that when he had promised, he was what? Able also to perform. Uh, listen, if we don't think God can turn this country around, he still can. Uh, God can still heal. I believe God can heal George today. I believe God can heal my mom today. God can heal... Uh, Miss Kelly today, God's still in the healing business. He has the power. The same God that spoke the worlds into existence has the power to do things still. He's a powerful God. I believe Abraham uh, uh, believed and had faith in that power. Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, powers, all things were created by him, for him. 1 Chronicles 29, 11, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and earth is Thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and Thou art exalted head as head above all. Exodus 14, 14, The Lord shall fight for you and shall hold your peace. He's powerful. I believe Abraham believed and had faith in God's promises. He also had faith and believed in God's power. Abraham also had faith and believed in God's word. Not so much that it was just his word, but in his perfect word. Notice verse 22, 3, 23, and 24. 22 says, And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Uh, by the way, that word imputed means to be charged. It was charged it, like if something is charged to your account. Okay, That's what imputed means. It was imputed to him for righteousness. So righteousness was charged his account in verse 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believed on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So it's interesting, this thing that's charged, this idea of righteousness was charged his account, not because of his works, but because of what he believed, because of his faith. And the Bible says there it was written down, not just to, to, to sing the praises of Abraham, but it was written down, God's written word in perfection was written, not just for Abraham only, not just for the Jew only, but for you and I as well, that we might understand that God's word is perfect and it's pure, and that when God writes it down, that's what he says and that's what he means. It's not by works. But we're justified by grace, righteousness. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. 2 Timothy 3, 16, you know these verses. All scripture given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. Watch. For instruction in righteousness. There's that word righteousness again. 
Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. I believe Abraham had faith in, the, in God's word being perfect. That when God said, by the way, when God said, I, I call your friend and uh, I, I count your works as righteous, it's not because of the works you've done, but because you believe. Perfect word of God. Number four. And we'll be closed with this. But notice this. Notice verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. We already mentioned that Abraham told his son Isaac God would provide, notice the wording there, himself a lamb. God would, would provide the sacrifice. I... I don't know that Abraham completely understood that. Matter of fact, I know Abraham didn't completely understand it. If you look in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that Abraham stepped out by faith. You know, God looked at Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to get up. And Abraham said, where do you want me to go? And he said, I'll let you know when you get there. How would you like that today? Y'all just pack up, load up the U-Haul, and where are you going? Figure it out when we get there. Doesn't sound like a very smart plan, does it? I mean, in today's day and time, we have to have a location. We have to have hotel reservations. We have to have a plan when we get there. We've got to have a place to live. We've got to know what we got to have a job. We've got to have all this. In Abraham's day, Abraham packed up and just took off and went where God told him to go. That's walking by faith. So we say, well, you know, he didn't understand all this thing about God having a plan. He had to have a little bit of a concept of it. He had to have just a little bit of a concept that God has a plan. And I'm just going to put my faith and trust in the fact that God has a plan for me. And he has a plan to take care of me. And I'm just going to believe in that plan. A lot of people say, well, you can't push salvation to the cross ahead of time. Well, that's what faith is, by the way. Faith is stepping out and believing and having hope in something you don't know what's out there. We, but how many of you really know what's going to happen this afternoon? Do y'all have any clue about what's going to happen tomorrow? We really don't. And yet, the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith is substance, though. Substance means it's tangible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So substance, meaning uh, the word substance has to do with a container. So, so, so our faith is not just empty, vague, nothing. Our faith is in something that's been proven. So in other words, we put our faith in something that we can prove to be real. But that doesn't always mean that we understand uh, everything that God's going to do in the next five minutes. But we do know that God has a plan, if that makes any sense. And so in the idea of Abraham, you say, well, Abraham, and this is where a lot of dispensations will go. And, well, Abraham, had, they had to work their way to, for salvation. They couldn't have looked forward to the cross. They didn't know that God was going to uh, send his son. No, but they had faith and they believed that God had a plan. That's it. And God fulfilled that plan. Now, it says right here the, in our text in Romans chapter 4, says who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification and then in verse 1 of chapter 5 it says therefore being justified by what faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ Abraham had faith in God and it was counted unto him for righteousness he believed and so folks this morning we believe. We believe that God sent His Son to die on an old rugged cross. We believe that He was crucified. We believe that He was dead and buried. We believe that He rose again. We believe that He rose again on the third day. We believe that He sits at the right hand of the Father. And we believe that He's coming again. We believe. And that is counted unto us for righteousness. And it's not that we... Listen, we can come here and say, well... Uh, uh, I go to church, got to be saved. You ever ask somebody, are you a Christian? Oh, I go to church. It doesn't make you saved. 
Oh, I, uh, are you a Christian? Well, I give to charities. It doesn't make you saved. Those are all great works, and we can sing, and we can give, and we can praise, and you can even read your Bible. But if you don't believe, if you don't believe, then it's not counted unto you for righteousness. We must believe. So when we talk about justification, we're justified. That's the process. The justified, or the word just, we are justified by grace through faith. Justified meaning when we stand before God one day. Justified meaning, yes, we are here in our sin, but we take on, we're justified in His righteousness. We're considered righteous because we believe that what He did on the cross for us by grace through faith. We put our faith and trust in Christ. That is the act of justification. And I don't know any other way to make it any other clearer. So if I haven't made it clear to you this morning, I pray and hope God will turn a light on. But just understand this. You must put your faith and trust in Christ. I beg you, plead with you this morning. Trust Him. Trust Him. Stand to your feet this morning.